to On the Shelf episode number 20 of... Brutal Battle. It's been a bit. I know we've had a bad track record with keeping with these On the Shelf episodes, so I want to ask a favor of the listeners. If there's a particular episode format that you're like, it's been a while and I would really like to hear that, just shoot an email or, or hit us on social media, mainly just Instagram. Um, so let us know on Instagram, shoot us an email, brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com, and on Instagram, just... Brutal Battle Podcast. Yes. So um, then that will just jog our memory, because the problem is we get focused on certain styles of episodes or certain beers that we have or see that we want to incorporate into an episode, and then we just have a tendency to forget about things like the On the Shelf episode. So we finally remembered, and we're like, let's run to the, to the liquor store And get these beers. So, we had fun picking them out. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We always do. And we think we we could have a pretty awesome lineup here. We're hoping. Fingers crossed. So, let's jump right into it. And this one is a brewery that was distributing in Maryland a long time ago. Then they pulled out of Maryland. And that's Three Floyds. That's out of Muncie, Indiana. They're out of somewhere in Indiana. Um... Where is it listed? Munster. Munster, Indiana. I said Muncie. Munster. Close. Like the cheese. Yeah, so Three Floyds Brewing out of Munster, Indiana. They were distributing in Maryland maybe like 15 years ago or so when they eventually pulled out. I don't know how long they were distributing before they pulled out, but I remember being able to get a hold of their Alpha King, their Gumball Head, and their Robert the Bruce. And those were just the main beers they were distributing here. Then they pulled out, and I was like, oh, where'd it go? Because I really loved Alf- I loved, loved all three of so them. You lo- I remember you loving Gumball Head. Yeah. Oh, and Pride and Joy. That's the other one we could get, which is an excellent English mild. That is a wonderful beer, Pride and Joy. So those are beers we could get. Then they were gone, so I was always like, oh, man, Three Floyds. Would get some here and there from Beer Temple shipments from Chicago, uh, but they came back. And I can't remember if they just came back to the state at the end of 2020, or if it was in the beginning of 2021, but super recent. So when I when we were there at the liquor store and we saw Three Floyds, I was like, we got to get some Three Floyds in on this. So I'm very excited to finally drink some Three Floyds that's been distributed in Maryland once again. And the beer we're going to do, all these beers are 16-ounce cans, as is kind of the most popular thing yeah. to do now. Uh it's Three Floyd's Cheer Team Ale, which is a double IPA. And I'm assuming it's not going to be a hazy because, to my knowledge, I don't think that Three Floyd's has gotten on the hazy train. But then again, I also wouldn't be surprised if they have because... Everybody's on the hazy train. Right. Everyone. It gets demanded. Oh, I didn't say the ABV. 7.7. Okay. I mean, not a big surprise. It smells good. As soon as I cracked it, it smells good. What does it look like? Uh, it's kind of hazy A little haze. I don't think it's, like, brewed as a hazy IPA, though. Yeah. Like, that, it doesn't look hazy like that. Like but a it's haze a little gel. Hazy. Yeah, potentially. But it's kind of like a light orange color. Yeah. Uh, smell? Mm, smells good. Ooh. It's really piney. I get, there's a good amount of pine there, but it's also like a marmalade. It's like pine and marmalade mm-hmm. mixing together. Like orange with a, marmalade. A little bit of orange, a little bit of ma- mango popping yeah, in there, Yeah, definitely too. mango. And this is the thing. Like, I've had a decent amount of, of Three Floyds beers in the past. And this this nose of this rem- reminds me a lot of their Dreadnought IPA. Actually, I think that was a double IPA as well. Which, that one had a ton of marmalade in the flavor. And I remember really liking that. So the nose is really reminding me of it. But this is a beautiful nose. Smells like a nice old school West Coast IPA that would be up my alley. It smells um, a little syrupy. It does smell syrupy. Yeah. Like it's going to have a pretty good thickness like to it when you viscosity. actually sit. Yeah. And I'm excited about that. Yeah, it smells good. It smells deep, rich, serious flavors. I love the smell of this beer. This smell is wonderful. Mm. It tastes just like it smells. Ooh. Ooh. That marmalade is in there. You get that marmalade. So much marmalade. Um, but it's not like a sweet marmalade. You just get a lot of the fruity flavors. 
I get like a little bit of a sweetness, but then the the bitterness on the yeah. finish kicks in and kind of cuts the sweetness yeah, off, kind which of balance, is good. Balances it out. Yeah. And it has like a probably like a medium low bitterness to it. Actually, it's growing a little bit more. Maybe like a medium bitterness. Yeah, I would say medium. Straight medium bitterness, but it's it's really a good accent on the end of the beer. A lot of pine. Yeah, a lot of pine. There is that bit of a pop of kind of like a little bit of a mango, but it's mainly it's mainly the pine and that like orange marmalade flavor. That orange marmalade flavor is beautiful in it's there. It's pretty good. And I love the way that it rolls into the pine as well. Like those two flavors, the way they mix together is really nice. This is a solid beer. This is a very nice beer. So it really is taking me back to like the way IPAs used to be and should still be. So thank you, Three Floyds, for continuing to put beers like this out there. Mm. And it, it, the other thing is, I know we had an IPA kind of recently on the podcast that I said had some marmalade to it, but it's been a long time since I've had like a an, an IPA that's had this level of like a marmalade flavor to it. And it just reminds me of how much I enjoy that flavor in hoppy beers. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's a good flavor profile for sure. Mm. I like that beer. It's good. Wow. Yeah. That's... It's right up your alley. It's definitely up my alley. I'm going to need to pick up more Three Floyds. They also had Zombie Dust at the liquor store, which everyone's very familiar with Zombie Dust. That's their Citra Pale Ale, which I think was kind of... The first beer, you like, using exclusively Citra that got really popular. Uh, it's not nearly as popular now because it's been available for many years, but I'm sure it's still a very good beer. Okay, I'm excited about this next one. As oh, you I am, are, too. I am, too, but it could also go wrong. It could. But I've heard really good things about the brewery, so I'm guessing it'll probably be good. So this is our first beer by this brewery that we've yeah. ever had. We've never had this brewery before, but... I did recently see an article that was ranking the top breweries in Pennsylvania, and this was in the top ten. I forget where they were. I think they were in the top five, actually. So this is Imprint Beer Company, and I think they're at a Hat- yeah, Hatfield, Pennsylvania. No idea where that is. It's not too far from uh, Philadelphia. Oh, okay. On the outskirts of Philadelphia. Well, that gives me a good reference. Um, it's their Oatology... Marshmallow, peanut butter, cookies, and cream. So apparently they have other versions of the Odology. This is just the special marshmallow, peanut butter, cookies, and cream version. And I think it's a milk stout. Yeah, I, think I mean what, that. I think that's what Untapped said when we looked it oatmeal up. Oatmeal stout, maybe? I don't know. Being an Odology, I would assume it's probably an oatmeal stout. That's my guess, but. Wait, was there any flavor text on the. Yeah, there is some flavor text on the Three Floyds, but. It doesn't say anything about actual flavors. It's just kind of like this. Random Not text. worth reading. And there's no information on the imprint one, though. And the imprint beer is 7%. 7%. There you go. Yeah, I'm excited about this. And it's a cool black can. Yeah, you don't see that often. I like, you know, it's a small thing, but I do like when breweries go off and do something kind of interesting. Like, Revolution Brewing... Like, they use normal colored cans, but sometimes they'll have the tab is, like, neon green. Uh, I just, you know, I like those little yeah. accents. Something fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's just fun. So it's dark. Oh, and by the way, the fact that this is 7%, which is not on the can, we looked it up yeah. ahead of time. Uh, I like that fact, because usually when you get a beer that has these added ingredients to it, it's usually uh, an Imperial Stout that's really high ABV. So, it's nice to step away from the high ABV for stuff like this. So, it's dark. Yeah. Not too dark, though, because I feel like I, I, see a, I see through it around the edges, just kind of like a light brown. Not much of a head on it. But when you do swirl it up, it's kind of like medium-sized bubbles. Slightly beige. So, I'm definitely getting the peanut butter, and I'm definitely getting the cookies and cream. Oh, my God. The cookies and cream is very strong. Yeah. At first, I thought it was marshmallow, oh but gosh. it's definitely cookies and cream on the nose. And it's that lard. It's the lard. The it's filling. the lard. The fill. The lard filling, which is vanilla. So yeah. you're probably not going to get the marshmallow on the nose because that vanilla lard will just over, take over. Yeah. yeah, those will just blend together basically. But 
I smell that chocolate cookie from yeah. the cookies and cream a lot. I mean, the cookies and cream is so prevalent. And, and I get the peanut butter. Don't you get the peanut butter? I do get the peanut butter, but it's definitely lower than that cookies and cream. The cookies oh, and cream the- is dominating, and then there's a little bit of peanut butter under it. See, I smell the peanut butter first, and then the cookies and cream. I don't. To me, it's 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 the cookies and cream first and foremost, and it's then so the peanut weird. butter. But it's the so, peanut butter is there. It's so weird to smell such a strong cookies and cream. It yeah, especially because can you remember ever having a cookies and cream beer? No. I think the only one I can think of is we had one by Burley Oak at some point, which we don't drink Burley Oak anymore because they're an asshole company uh, for many reasons. A real asshole company, including their QC, their quality control is non-existent. Basically, um, okay, I'm we going won't drink in. them anymore. But ooh, it really does smell pretty awesome. What the? This is confusing. Yeah, it's very confusing right now. I feel like I'm perceiving a lot of the alcohol on the finish, which I'm not liking. It's got this astringent finish. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, a little bit of like that alcohol astringent hotness coming together with the bitterness at the end of the beer. And it's just kind of tasting sweet. Yes, it's very sweet. I guess we kind of should have anticipated that. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't really care for it either. I mean, I taste a little bit of the peanut butter. I am primarily liking the smell, primarily tasting the cookies and cream. I do taste it. If you want a really sweet beer that has cookies and cream primarily with a slight undertone of uh, peanut butter, then you might like this beer, but... You guys know us. We don't like super sweet beers. We want it to still taste like an actual beer, especially when it comes to, like, dark chocolatey and vanilla-y and and flavors like this. Yeah, it's like cookies and cream sweetness and then astringency alcohol. Yeah, it's it's not good. I don't like this at all. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's... and the thing is, like, when you're drinking it, like, I feel it's like after you take a sip of it is when you can understand that you got that cookies and cream flavor. But when you're drinking it, all you taste is just, like, overwhelming sweet. Yeah. That's just tastes like straight sugar that's followed by that, like, astringency and bitterness. And it's not, it doesn't work. It's not working. And this isn't like an old, it's not like an old can. It was just canned. This month. Yeah, I think August 5th, right? It's not even a month old. It's not even half a month old at this point. Like, this is a fresh beer. Yeah. That's gross. And the booziness tastes more than 7%. Ugh. Ugh, I took a big swig of what was left in my glass. That is disgusting. No, thank you. No, thank you. I do. I want to try more of their beers, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think... This, this is the this, this is a problem. Style, I feel like it's hard to execute. Well, I just don't like the style in general um, because it's too risky. Like yeah. you, you even have like really good breweries who put you know put out stuff like this. I mean, it's still better than that m- modest or modest oh, I was, beer. I, that's exactly that what I was so thinking trash. of. That peanut butter cup beer that we had. Yeah, that was trash. But I mean, I can see people who would like this. It's just for us, we really hate this beer because it is just like. It's just sugary sweet and then astringency and bitterness, and there's not a whole lot to actually enjoy. But they have a lot of imprint beers at our local liquor yeah. store, so we could even potentially do a whole showcase on imprint and you know put a real good selection out there of what their beers are. Because like I said, I've heard really good things about imprint's beers. So I, I'm going to guess this probably isn't really a real representation of their brewery. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, but that beer sucks. Hate it. Um, okay. okay, so the third brewery we're going to do. Now, this is a brewery that we've talked about before, and we've had a few of their beers, but very limited. We've only had one of their beers on podcast, which was a New England-style IPA that I actually ended up really enjoying, which is shocking for me. But this is one of the breweries we visited physically when we went to Maine and had our Maine expedition, or I'm sorry, expedition, excursion, May excur- or Maine excursion 
episode. Ooh, tongue-tied. God. I'm just so, like, my palate's so just messed up from the that oatology. I, I'm having a hard time because there's still sweetness sitting in my mouth. Yeah. And it's gross. Well, Even though I just drank a lot of water. It'll dissipate after this beer. Yeah. Oh, hopefully. So, anyway. So, this is Battery Steel Brewing. And this is their Flume Double IPA. And it is 8%. So, I believe... Yeah, this is the highest ABV of all the beers we're having on this episode. And we actually don't have any Maryland beers on this episode. We did have one that we were going to do, potentially, but the can felt super tight. So I was a little bit concerned, because there was also fruit in it, that it may have been on the verge of exploding for, from refermentation. Because usually, if you just kind of like give it a little squeeze... If there's no give in the can, like there was with that one, that's potentially a really bad sign that there's re-fermentation and it might explode on you. Uh, and we're very sensitive to that now because we literally had a beer explode in our house a few months ago. And our ceiling is still stained. Because <laughs> it was a stout. Yeah, so there's a really messed up stain on our ceiling from the, that stout. But um, I'm not going to say who the brewery was. We will have beers from that brewery in the future. Oh, I don't want to keep you on a cliffhanger. It was not infected or it had not been re-fermented. They just filled it all the way. So there was literally no room in the can for air, which is a good thing. The one um, that did not explode. But we we tried the beer off podcast and we hated it. We thought yeah. it was really gross. But we've heard a lot of good things about the brewery, so we'll try another one of those. So this battery steel is not out of Portland, Maine. It's out of New York. Yeah, so, so they have multiple locations, yeah. at least two that we know of right now. So... Let's go ahead, finally, and get into their Flume Double IPA. Alright, here we go. I'm hoping this is like the uh, the Cheer Team by Three Floyds. That would be nice. Yeah. It doesn't look hazy, does it? No, nope. uh, a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Oh, yeah, it actually does look hazy. But I guess I shouldn't be that surprised because I literally talked about how we had a battery steel hazy IPA that I enjoyed. Yeah, it looks super hazy. Orange with a little yellow to it. It smells so juicy. It does. But I'm hoping it's not one of those like hazy IPA bait and switch where it's like, man, it just smells so good. And then when you sip it, you're like, it tastes nothing like that. Yeah. But yeah, it smells juicy. It smells juicy. I get a little melon. Melon? Do you get a little melon to it? Like a little cantaloupe? No. I get a faint cantaloupe. I get a little grapefruit. Just smells citrusy to me. I can't pick out anything. A little pineapple, too. It smells really good. It smells good, and it just smells citrusy to me. And there's a little sweetness on the nose. A little sweetness on yeah. the nose. Not too much, though. It's, it's a good it level. Smells... All right. I'm going in. It smells like an orange Julius. I can see that. Oh, dude. Okay, I want, I want to see what you say about it I'm first. definitely tasting melon. Boom. Yeah, that's what I, as soon as, that was my re initial reaction. I have never tasted that level of a melon in a beer before. Yeah, that's so weird. And that's, it's good. I like it. Like, I really enjoy that. That's, that's why I feel like, I guess, I was smelling it so much. Because, man, it is really the dominating flavor. I'm getting more honeydew. Yeah. I, yeah. I would agree with that. It is more of that. For people who don't know, although you probably all do, honeydew's the green melon, not the orange melon, which we haven't had melon in a long time. Honeydew no. or cantaloupe. Just like your parents. Your yeah. Mom, your mom yeah. always has cantaloupe. That's true. They're just a pain to cut. There is a little bit of a pininess. On the finish, too. It's yeah, like... I can see that. It, it's like tons of melon, and then it finishes with a little hint of the pine. But it also tastes very easy. It's mm -hmm. very smooth. It's it's very... At 8%? Yeah. E oh, yeah, that's right. That's 8%. That doesn't taste like 8%. No, it doesn't. That's deceptive and dangerous. Um, it's good, though. I really enjoy that, and yeah. I'm, I'm just so blown away by how much melon is in there. Yeah, it's so weird. And I wouldn't think... It works, though. Right, and that, well, that's what I was going to say, is, like, I wouldn't think that... If you told me, like, try this IPA that has a lot of melon flavor, like, that would turn me off hearing it, but tasting it, I'm like, I actually really like how that's doing it. 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that beer is... That's a very nice beer. I really enjoy that. Really enjoy that. And it's really light, too. And for 8% being that light, geez. Okay. I'm very excited for this final beer because we know it's going to be excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call it. That's probably going to be our number one beer. I will find out. Call it right now. It is by Dewey Beer Company. It is their secret machine. And it's a secret machine with blueberry, blackberry, raspberry. And it is a fruited sour at 7%. And we went to Dewey Beer Company recently a few weeks ago because we took a trip to the beach. Like a month ago. Yeah, it was just like a day trip because Rebecca wanted to go as part of her birthday celebration. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, if you're that close to, like, Dogfish Head and Dewey, like, you gotta go. We also went to Thompson Island, which... Yeah. Don't... I mean, their their beers weren't bad, but they weren't particularly yeah. good either, so... I think it looked them. like they had... We didn't eat. It looked like they had good food. So right. it seemed like it was kind of like a good restaurant that also was a brewery. Yeah. Trying to be a brewery. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Dogfish Head was awesome. Yeah. Because one of the things is we tried... The Utopia's Barrel Aged Worldwide Stout, which I thought I was never going to have the opportunity to try, but since we were there and they had it on tap, I'm like, we we have to. That was a great beer. And we went to their location in Milton, so yeah, the actual, yeah. like, the actual main brewery, yeah. But that Utopia's Barrel Aged Worldwide Stout was so good. Yeah, it was. So good. But then we went to Dewey after that, and... Well, we went to Dewey first. Oh, yeah, we did. Sorry. We had a decent amount of beer, so... Yeah, I was a driver, so maybe remember. that's why I remember. Yeah, that <laughs> probably is why you remember. But yeah, um, but Dewey was really awesome. It, it was a new location we went to, yeah. too. Uh, they have their initial location, which is kind of like near, really close to the beach. Their new location is not, they still have the initial one. Yeah, it's the one in Dewey. But their like color scheme was really cool. They had like purple and pink like paint drips down the wall to the on their way to the bathroom it looks super cool it's a real like fun light funky feel it's very similar to when we went to bissell brothers in maine like their design aesthetic. idea yeah their aesthetic was very similar so i really liked it but we had a flight of four of their sours mm -hmm. and they were just knock it out of the park like every single one was so freaking good and okay well let's get in this beer and then i'll bring up what we had at Dewey when we were there, just to talk about what those beers were, because they were really tasty. Yeah, they were. Carlin's already like, when can we go back? I know. And I'm going to lure him back to the beach, because he hates the beach. So I'm like, if you could come to the beach again, we can go to Dewey. I know. That's, like, the only thing that's going to get me there. Because, like, you know, <laughs> we said recent, like we said on the podcast recently that, like, our favorite places for sours in Maryland are Idiom and Crooked Crab. Expand that. Our favorite place places for sours, in addition to Idiom and Crooked Crab, when you go outside of Maryland, are Fort Score and Dewey. Yeah. So. Such a pretty color. Oh, yes, it is. And I think we've had this one before. I think so, too. Uh, in the past. Um, it's like a dark ruby. Yeah. And it's got this beautiful pink head to it. Yeah. It's just like a very nice light pink. It's just like a visual, beautiful representation of the flavor to come. Yeah. It's that teaser. Oh, it just smells like good. berries. I know, yeah. I I wouldn't be able to pick out any specific is it raspberry? berry. Is it raspberry? Yeah. I do smell the raspberry. I will say that. Raspberry is pretty pronounced, especially when it's with beer, berries like blueberry and blackberry. Because I feel like blueberry. strength of aroma-wise, raspberry is yeah. much stronger than those two. Blueberry doesn't have... Blueberry and blackberry don't have as much of a flavor. Yeah, no. And then, I mean, the smell. Well, and blackberry for me often has a lot of earthiness with its mm -hmm. fruitiness. Raspberry is just like vibrant and sweetness and sometimes tart fruit to it. So I smell a lot of raspberry to it, but it smells gorgeous. It smells sweet, but not too sweet. It smells like it's going to be kind of creamy and smooth. Yeah, it does smell. I'm Wonderful. getting like a little vanilla. Yeah, I can see that. I don't, I don't think vanilla is I don't in think it, so either. but it, I think that's kind of like, like an association cream. with the smoothness, yeah. that creaminess. I can see that. All right, going in. I'm excited. Mm, it's good. Very it's, fruity. It, it's so smooth. It's so flavorful. It's really fruity, but it's not too sweet. No, like, it's it, not. It has that natural fruit sweetness without being too sweet. Like it's, it doesn't even go up to the sweetness threshold. 
Like, it's low sweetness, which is kind of mind-blowing considering that it tastes like there's so much berry yeah. to it. And it's hard to believe it's 7%. Yeah, this tastes like one of those fruited sours that's like four. Yeah. You can't perceive, like, any ABV to this thing. It goes down super smooth. Yeah. But it's super flavorful. I mean, if you just like... I kind of view these types of beers as, like, my guilty pleasure. Because I talk all the time about beers that... I want to have certain flavors that are interesting and fun, but I still want them to really taste like beer. I feel like these types of beers, the fruited sours, a lot of times don't really even taste like beer. I would say this is like the perfect, be- quote, beer for your non-beer drinker. Oh, yeah. As, a, as an introduction, for sure. So when we're talking about the actual flavor, I'm definitely getting a lot of the raspberry, like I said I was in the in the nose. But I'm also getting a decent amount of the blackberry. I know the blueberry's in there somewhere, but I feel like that's kind of lost under the raspberry and blackberry. So, yeah. Okay, I just did my lineup of beers on the table. Yep. I knew we were going to be the same. Yeah, we're exactly the same, so. Did you want to read what we got from Dewey? Ooh. You wanted to do that. Yes, thank you for reminding me. But that, be- oh, God. Well, and here's the great thing is we've been continually getting some some of these secret machines from Dewey at our local liquor store. So that is wonderful. Yeah. Because how long... For how long after, you know, these types of fruited sours became a big deal, could nobody get it near them at liquor stores and beer stores? Yeah, I'm going to go through the Dewey now, but I do remember the Push Pop, I guess it was called. I'm just going to go backwards and, oh, there we go. Wait, that was another half. I'll just edit this out when we get there. July... Yeah, we did a lot of drinking. There we go. Okay, so we had the Secret Machine Strawberry Blueberry Gelato, which I gave a 3.25. If you know what my ratings are like. Oh, and by the way, perfect time to say, follow us on Untapped. I'm Carlin C. or Carlin Cook. and um, Rebecca, Rebecca C. C. So yeah, I gave it a 3.25. And if you know, like my, my rating typically on Untapped for a beer that... That's a solid beer, is a three. And I don't go, I barely ever get to a four. So if you see me giving something a four, that's kind of crazy. I know, but it sticks with the podcast, the brutal ratings. But uh, yeah, the Secret Machine Strawberry Blueberry Gelato, I gave it a 3.25. Really good. Their Push Pop, uh, which, does it even say what is in their Push Pop? Oh yeah, here it is. The Push Pop is Blood Orange Pomegranate Marshmallow Mimosa Sorbet. Ugh. Ugh. And actually, I guess I should read that if there's anything additional you need to know about in the gelato. Creamy and fruited dessert secret machine that tastes like a melted berry gelato. I mean, it basically did. Then we had their... This was Rebecca's favorite. Secret machine Meyer Lemon Maraschino Cherry Pineapple Coconut Pie. Yeah, that was really awesome. I gave that a three and a half, which is really good for me. But my favorite one that I gave a 3.75 is Secret Machine Pineapple Grapefruit Orange. That was the probably my favorite fruited sour of all time. Mm, Like literally, big big statement. That's literally the best fruited sour I've ever had. It was good because it was, like, sweet and tart at the same time. It just yeah. wasn't. And the, um, it was gorgeous. That was our last pick, wasn't it? Because I think yeah. the beer tender was, like, we were, like, what else should we try? We were going to do one more because they only do half pours, not, like, a true flight. Yeah. So we only wanted to get four. And he's, like, get this one because it's, it's a little tart. It'll balance out all your sweetness. Yeah, and, and he, he was right on. Yeah, what was his name? Gar. Gar. Like the fish. That's how I remember it, because I even said to him, I'm like, oh, like the like the fish gar. And he's like, yeah. By the way, if people, if you don't know what a what a gar fish is, like, look gar up. They have huge teeth. They're kind of like badass fish. I've never met a person with the name gar before. I think it's actually legit a really cool name. And he was a really nice, cool yeah, guy. Super nice. Um, very helpful, too. Everyone there was super nice. We talked to a yeah. few people there, and yeah. they were super nice. Um, so, yeah, just, just a great time. I got to go back to Dewey. Like, I feel addicted to their sours. <laughs> it's so messed up. 
That's so messed up. We also just need to be going to the liquor store more to grab these secret machines and just, like, stock it up. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to be honest right now. Like, when I think about, oh, I want to have a beer right now, it's just like a one beer type thing during the week or something. I'm usually thinking about these fruited sours. Really? Yeah, not specifically Dewey, but like Dewey, Idiom, Crooked Crab, Four Score, like those types. I just want a sour like that. Um, so I think we, we need just, to go back to Four Score too. Yes, it's been a while. The problem is like I want to be able to have their Jamba, which is their version of the fruited sours, which are phenomenal. But the problem is the popularity with their Jambas has gotten out of control and they do the special can releases. So I want to go during can release to get some cans, but I also don't because it's always a mob scene. Yeah. And I don't like to deal with that. Like even pre COVID, I hated to deal with that stuff. Like I hate crowds. I've always hated crowds. Then COVID happened and it gave me even more reason to hate crowds. (laughs) And then other people kind of got to my level with it, actually. I'm like, see? See? Crowds are terrible. (laughs) See? I hate them. Now you do, too. No, not that bad. But, yeah, this is a good episode, um, except for that Odology, unfortunately. So we should read our, read. Oh, yeah. Say what our lineup is. I put them in order, and we didn't say it. Yes, go for it. Number four is obviously the Odology, unfortunately. By By imprint. The marshmallow, peanut butter, cookies, and cream. Number three is the Flume, the double IPA by Battery Steel. Number two is the Three Floyds Cheer Team Ale. Which is that double IPA. And obviously the number one is Secret Machine. But I will say that I feel like the Flume and the Cheer Team Ale are kind of close for me. Yeah. I do definitely give the edge to the Cheer Team Ale, but that Flume is not far behind. Yeah. So, but yeah. It's a pretty clear one and a pretty clear four. And yeah. two and three are pretty close. I mean, I'd put that the number four at like ten. Yeah. <laughs> Even without other beers in, yeah, in this. It's, it's kind of unfortunate. Ugh. Okay, so lesson learned. We will get something else from Imprint. Yeah, I want to try more of their stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe we should just do a showcase. There was enough there. Yeah, they had a lot. I, I, I feel like they had at least like eight different I don't know if they had that imprint. many. There was like almost an entire row in the singles uh, cooler mm-hmm. of their beer. No joke. So however many is in a row, I think it was an entire row except for like one or two slots. Oh, okay. So I'm saying, I, I'm pretty sure it was at least like eight different beers. So plenty to choose from. But anyway, um, that does it for this. Um, we will try not to go too long without another on the shelf episode. So yeah, but you can remind us, like I said, Brutal Battle Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.